soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Build a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and all woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills. It's just the place for you. You got the glass still. Folks, uh, we will reconvene the meeting, and uh, we did spend uh, some time in camera there to deal with uh, a property matter that the solicitor brought us up to date on. So we will now need a mover and a seconder for the recommendation that committee reconvene in open session at 5.02 p.m. Councilor Van Passen and Councilor Rabbits. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. So, we're at the stage of our meeting where we're dealing with uh, deputations with respect to Silver Lake. And we have uh, Mr. Jim Dover and Mary Gatsby here from uh, Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association to uh, do a deputation with respect to the dredging of Silver Lake. Could they please come forward to the podium? You have 10 minutes for your deputation, and I will notify you when you have one minute left, Mr. Dover. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jim Dover, 
and uh, I'm a member of the uh, Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association. We would like to express our appreciation for the opportunity uh, to respond to the questions raised at the February 15th uh, Council and Committee meeting when report PW19-08 uh, Meisner Dam response to Council's direction was discussed. The Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association is an incorporated not-for-profit organization made up of volunteers dedicated to the preservation and enhancement of the Port Dover waterfront and the harbour, including the waterways and wetlands such as the Lynn River, uh, Black Creek and Silver Lake. Our goal is to ensure that these waterways remain navigable for recreation and marine business purposes, that fish and wildlife habitat are revitalized and that the community retains access to these areas for their enjoyment. Since 2008, our association has successfully lobbied for Port Dover Harbour Marina to remain a publicly owned and operated facility and for the Port Dover Lighthouse to be recognized as a heritage site maintained by Norfolk County. We've also provided input to various zoning applications along waterways. We've been advocating for the repair of Meisner Dam and revitalization of Silver Lake in partnership with other organizations such as the Port Dover Lions Club, Port Dover Yacht Club, Friends of Silver Lake, since the water was first lowered in 2009. We're pleased with Council's decision to reject the do nothing option presented in the report. We're also pleased that Council defeated the recommendation to proceed with an environmental assessment. Based on these decisions, we believe Council's preferred option is to repair the dam. And for that reason, I'm not going to take up your time to explain why it's necessary to repair the dam. Instead, I'll respond to the questions raised by Council on February 5th. And I understand those questions to be, is the community aware that the proposed repair to the dam will not raise the water in Silver Lake to its historical level? Two, are there any insurmountable barriers to revitalizing Silver Lake? And three, does the community expect the county to restore Silver Lake? These are all reasonable concerns. The short answer is that our association has always been aware that the water level in Silver Lake will not return to its historical level. Our preliminary plans take this into account. Furthermore, we're not aware of any insurmountable barriers, though there are going to be challenges, and we agree that the community, not the county, must be the significant contributor to the revitalization of Silver Lake. Since 2009, our association has been consulting with all those regulatory authorities that will oversee the revitalization. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans, I'm going to be calling them DFO. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, I'll call them MNR. Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks, I'll call them OE. And Long Point Region Conservation Authority, I'm going to refer to that as LPRCA. We've never been made aware of any insurmountable barriers to our vision of revitalizing Silver Lake by any of these organizations. Our vision includes revitalizing the provincially significant wetlands at the north end, digging out the south end to create a smaller but very usable Silver Lake for a variety of recreational activities, providing good public access to both areas for recreational and environmental purposes, and creating a series of silt traps with good truck access to protect in a cost-effective manner the waterway below Miser Dam to the Port Dover Harbor. I have Marion Gasby with Vice President of our association here today to answer any technical questions about our vision and preliminary plans. This vision will require public input and regulatory approvals. Since 2010, our association's strategy, based on consultation with key stakeholders and regulatory authorities, has been to focus on getting Meisner Dam repaired. In fact, MNR would not consult with us on the revitalization of the lake until the decision of Meisner Dam was dealt with. Only then will we be able to move forward with revitalizing Silver Lake. Our association is committed to be a major player in this project and we're willing to work with all stakeholders to get this done. We've always known this project will be a major undertaking and we've always known it's possible. In 2003, the Rowing Club met with long LPRCA and DFO representatives regarding dredging and infilling of Silver Lake. It was concluded in writing by DFO that it was possible for the dredging project to proceed, provided that an adequate compensation plan for fish and fish habitat was developed. 
approval was received to dig out a point of land along the west shore of Silver Lake. This was done. However, the project at Dredge Lake was put on hold for the reasons I mentioned. Just last week, I contacted DFO as an advisor. There is no reason to believe the response to a similar proposal will be any different today. And in fact, the approval process may be easier. In 2010, the county contracted the services of SSC Lavalin to do soil testing at the bottom of Silver Lake. This testing identified only low levels of soil contamination in the lake bottom. At a meeting with MOE representatives at the time, and Ron Keating was with me, we confirmed that the low levels of contamination would not present a major obstacle to our preliminary plans. Just last week, I contacted MOE and confirmed that the regulations have not changed. I was advised that it may be necessary to update the soil testing results, but we have no reason to believe that the low levels of contamination have changed since the testing was done in 2010. The MNRF has recently confirmed that only the bed of the Lynn River would be subject to a work permit for dredging activities. That's a very small area. The work permit would govern the disposal of the dredged material. And our preliminary plans take these requirements into account. Several years ago, we met with LPRCA staff to review our preliminary plans. No barriers were identified, though we did incorporate their suggestions into our plans. And just last week, we used correspondence outlining the requirements, which have not changed since we last met. We realize the revitalization of Silver Lake is a major project that will take years to complete and require significant funding. We estimate the total cost of this project will be in the millions of dollars. Like the successful Long Point Causeway improvement and Lake Lisgar revitalization projects, the Silver Lake revitalization project will need to be completed in phases and require a committee to be established. The committee would be made up of volunteers representing local, provincial, national organizations with one participating organization acting as the lead agency regarding applications for funding support and contract management. We believe it would be unreasonable for Norfolk County taxpayers to pay for the project to revitalize Silver Lake. Instead, federal and provincial governments the private sector and national, as well as international conservation organizations, should be the major funding contributors. However, given the county uses Silver Lake as a stormwater retention pond and owns property and infrastructure adjacent to Silver Lake, it's reasonable to expect the county will want input and bear some costs in this project. We welcome the county's participation in this project for this reason. To enable the community to start the revitalization of Silver Lake, we ask that Council direct staff to prepare a roadmap for the repair of the dam, one with specific timelines, and that staff be directed to treat this project as a high priority. We'd welcome the opportunity to participate with county staff in future deliberations regarding the repair of the Meisner Dam and revitalization of Silver Lake from this point forward. In summary, we know what we're getting when the dam is repaired. There are no insurmountable barriers, and community organizations are prepared to lead the revitalization of Silver Lake. Let's get to work together. Mary and I are pleased to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Thank you. Very good presentation. Questions to Mr. Dover or Ms. Gatsby? Mayor Chop, then Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you, sir, for coming today. Um, Couple questions. So uh, this morning you sent me an email from uh, Sherry Pinio back in 2012, and I contacted her uh, today, and she actually said that this file um, has been passed over to uh, MECP, and uh, it's no longer sort of under her jurisdiction. Um, the one concern that I have, well, not the one, but one of. Um, you know, I think what I'm suffering from right now is that, that a lot of blame is sort of being put on this new council. And it wasn't this council that's been here for years prior. And we are just trying to do our due diligence. And I think it's clear that everybody here, at some point, we are going to make a decision uh, surrounding the dam. What I do think, I, I, you know, I think it's quite possible even today around this room that you will have the support uh, to retender for the dam. However, 
I don't, I think that's the easy solution. Uh, to me, repairing the dam, if we did it today, it's not changing anything. And what the, the question I have for you is, what has stopped you from going in and given that there's private landowners from dredging the lake up until now? Because the, the repair of the dam really is just from a liability perspective so the dam doesn't fall over. It's not that you had to wait for the dam to be repaired to, to begin the dredging. Uh, that's uh, not correct. Uh, that's what the letter that uh, I forwarded you to, I was just looking for a, a copy. If you could just... Could you just I, I have it right here in front of me. So okay. again, that's why I called Sherry this morning. And I, I can just read this letter for everybody here. I think this is a pretty big decision when we're talking about a couple million dollars. It says, hi, Jim, thank you for submitting your sketch regarding Silver Lake. As we discussed previously, although we understand the need for you to seek funding and gain approvals, we do feel it is premature to discuss the dredging of Silver Lake prior to a resolution regarding Meisner Dam. Sherry and I had this conversation this morning where I said, you know, I was kind of questioning back on this letter because repairing the dam is not changing anything. All I can say is that uh, Sherry advised us that it was premature to discuss the dredging of Silver Lake and she represented m and and they would not entertain any discussions. I received this actually today, uh, t this morning, I was forwarded this uh, email to remind me by m and representative. I wasn't aware though, as you said, that uh, this file had been passed off. Another, and that's the, and, and just to, to address your point about concern about blame. I, if there's anything that we've learned in this process that is that blame gets us nowhere, it just gets us conflict, and we have to work together. And uh, we're not blaming council. Okay? That was never our intent to blame council. But what we're saying is that we have been told that the dam has to be decided first before we can, they will even entertain any suggestions on how to proceed. And they provide the approvals. So Well, we I certainly would be willing to work with you, with the authorities, mm -hmm. to be able to communicate this challenge that we face, mm -hmm. which is, if we repair the dam and we don't get the approvals, well then what did we just spend $2 million on? Because then the lake's not going to change and we're just gonna be left with a mess there moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where I feel that it is, you know, our responsibility as this new council to take a minute here to make sure, and I, again, I will gladly, as the mayor of Norfolk County, work with you in reaching out to the agencies and see whether or not if we were to repair the dam or even have a provisional approval by council to put to agree that we will repair the dam provided these approvals from the authorities are realized. The other concern that I have is in regards to the level of toxicity or potential toxicity in the sediment. Um, I appreciate your comments regarding uh, the soil testing by uh, SNC Lavalin. I would almost, um, I would likely support even a motion to for council to potentially do some testing here again on some of the soil that's in there because there was a report from 2005. At that point, I believe there was something like 60,000 cubic meters of sediment that would need to be dredged. That's um, somewhere in the range, I believe, of 5,700 triaxles of sediment that would need to be taken out. When we're looking at the two million for the dam, I believe that the cost of dredging will far exceed the cost of repair for the dam. Um, and so, you know, I know you've hinted that there'll be provincial and federal money and, and potentially money from conservation authorities. I don't see the conservation authorities supporting it. I think the province and the feds, I mean, We've got some other major issues here that we're struggling to get money out of them uh, for. So I don't necessarily see the money coming in that direction. So I guess all I'm trying to get at is I, I, I would like your support for this council and I, again, for us to work with you to let's see about getting the approvals and let's see about an actual cost estimate for Silver Lake and 
I can't speak for the rest of council, but I believe if we had all of those other items in place, that I think you would find that this council would be quite supportive of doing those additional steps. We're certainly willing to uh, work with the county and participate uh, with staff in, in uh, discussions. Um, one uh, option is possibly like, just like the county has um, decided to rule out the no option, uh, to rule out the environmental assessment. Uh, if the county were to rule out the decommissioning option, that may signal to MNR that uh, the county is committed to the repair of the dam. Because my sense is that that was what the MNR was not sure about. So that's just a, a speculation on my part, but I can say that we are prepared to uh, work with the county. Through you, Mr. Chair, if I might. One other idea, I was um, speaking with uh, Councillor Martin, and um, you know, what would you think about the formation of some sort of committee that was composed of a couple of council members and yourself? What I also don't want to see is, I mean, this tender is also just to go and repair the dam. There's been talk of wanting to have a little spot for people to fish off of it and so on. Um, I just want to see us not sell ourselves short at this point just because it's you know make a decision on the dam and and that's where you've got a new council that's like willing to accept new ideas and wants to see these other components um be wrapped into the tender so would you support an idea like that of having a couple of council members and and some members from the lions association and yourselves is i'm glad that you added the lions uh, club because they're a major stakeholder in this and uh, so I can't speak for the Lions Club but I can speak for the Association and we would certainly be willing to participate in this one of the concerns that we have and we have to put it on the table is that this has been going on since 2003 and we recognize that this is a new council and we really that's why in our ask we're asking for a roadmap with uh, very clear timelines and that we, we follow those timelines. Through you, Mr. Chair, I think, again, I just, I can't emphasize enough that even if we voted to repair the dam today, it's, it's not necessarily going to change anything. And so it's all those other components that for me concern me more than simply retendering to do the repair on the dam. Again, that would be, I said to you on the telephone this morning, that would be the easiest thing in the world right now for us to do because it gets it off our plate and then it's over and done with. I just don't think that that's the responsible thing for us to do at this point. And, and um, uh, my response uh, to that was that uh, uh, all of our conversations with the regulatory authorities have never suggested there was an insurmountable barrier. And all of our plans have taken into account what we understand the requirements to be. So we don't have any reasonable ground to believe that there won't be any, any approval will be withheld. We recognize that there's significant costs and we recognize that there may be potential savings and we're prepared with alternative measures, method, methods, and we're prepared to explore those. But beware of costs that are not, are hidden. I mean, the, well, the, uh, the steel bridge, for example, still has to be removed. It's still a cost. If you take the Stantec estimate for this project, there are so many costs there that still have to be incurred on top of what some people in the community are quoting as potential cost savings, not to mention just... If, if a new structure totally was built, you need an environmental assessment, which is 150000 in a year. So there's a lot of hidden things, and that's why working together uh, uh, with staff, uh, talking this through, I, I think there's real, real value in that, that we move forward. But it needs to be moved as a, treated as a high priority, because the longer we wait, we know that the known cost of the repair that we have that was tendered and turned down by the previous council, that cost is just going to keep on going up as we keep on deliberating this and potentially ending up having to incur more studies, engineering studies, uh, and 
more studies. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chair, just one more. Um, I, 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 my proposal would be that we get moving on it, but let's get moving on seeing that we're actually going to get the approvals. Because in my conversation with Sherry Pinio at the MNR today, I don't think it's going to be, unfortunately, quite as easy as it's made out to be. I think there are challenges to removing toxic sediment. I think that is a significant volume. And I think, you know, a couple million dollars to repair the dam, unless we have the guarantee that we're also going to be able to fix Silver Lake, which is what this is really about. I mean, that's even what your shirt says. Um, you know, that's what we need to put our focus on right now. With all due respect, Sherry Pinio is not the regulatory authority that would be dealing with the toxicity. That would be the MOE. It, I, I completely agree, okay. but just that we, you know, get some 2019 statements from them okay. that they would support it, I think would go a okay. long way right now. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your okay. time. Councillor Taylor, questions? Thank you, Chair Columbus, and through you to our deputation. Um, just would you repeat what your ask is coming here again today? I've, you've mentioned it twice, and I just want a clear ask in front of us. We ask that council direct staff to prepare a roadmap for the repair of the dam, one with specific timelines, and that staff be directed to treat this project as a high priority. We would welcome the opportunity to participate with county staff in future deliberations regarding the repair of Miser Dam and revitalization of Silver Lake from this point forward. Okay. And I see everything that Mayor Chop has said fitting in very well with this ask today where we can make sure these approvals are in place and that being priority one of this timeline. Um, that's how I would feel most comfortable proceeding today uh, or in the near future at least, making sure that those 2019 numbers are here, this, everything's up to date. Um, and secondly, if I may through you, Mr. Chair, um, I realize that the MECP is in charge of the file now, is that what? Um, but would you be able to provide the documentation to us where the MNR said that they don't want to discuss the lake until the dam question is finished? Was that, that was emailed earlier or was that, okay. Um, and uh, then if we go a little bit further into discussing what working with Norfolk County and your organization would look like on this project. We haven't talked a lot about that. We do know that the, the hub uh, has been working together with the county. I don't know if it would be the same type of uh, uh, relationship. I think that's simply something that we'd have to talk through uh, with what would work best. But the, the, the thing is, the important thing is that we're, we're talking and we're part, we're at the table with discussions. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. The discussions need yeah. to be there. Thank you. Okay, further questions to the uh, deputation? Don't see any. Okay, thank you, thank sir. You. And, thank uh, you very much. Marian. We'll call on our next deputation with respect to this uh, Meisner Dam issue. And that is from Mr. Alan Strang, who uh, represents the Port Dover Lions Club. And it's with respect to fundraising, respecting the dredging of Silver Lake. Mr. Strang, you may take the podium. You have um, a uh, My name is, uh, is Paul Boulanger. I'm actually the president of Port Dover Lions Club, so I'll be standing in for Mr. Strang. Okay, what is your name, sir? My name is Paul Boulanger. You got that, Mr. Clerk? Okay. Thank um, you. I, I had a, a statement to, to present. Uh, the reality of it is, is that uh, n now what, what has been said, I'm trying to repeat. I mean, in, in fact, we are the, the biggest landowner on the lake. We have 28 acres. We have some 800 meters of property on the on the shore of the lake, and and we bought into the lake, uh, into the lake into the property uh, in 1995 with the objective of developing the property uh, as a recreation area uh, for use uh, of the citizens of Port Dover, and uh, you're saying that we have to justify the spending of the money. We've spent tons of money already 
developing the property and we'd like to keep on developing the property as a recreational area and as a gem for the uh, for Port Dover. Uh, you have to fix the dam, otherwise there's no lake. If there's no lake, why are we developing anything to fix the property around the lake? If there's only going to be a river, a little creek, a creek going through there, why are we developing it as a big recreational area? The lake is what brings everybody to Port Dover, tourists and citizens. Everybody wants to use the property there because there is water. There was a time when everybody used to bring their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren to, to fish on the lake. So it goes back 163 years. That's history. It's not just another little lake, pond, or whatever. It's First of all, it's our property. We want to develop it properly. We want to do something for the citizens. We're not in it for the money. We're in it to put something in there and for the citizens to use. I'm sorry, but there has to be a fixing situation there before we can fix the lake. I'm, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? No, you don't understand what I'm saying. Are, well, you, ready, are you ready for some questions, sir? Well, I guess we'll have to do some questions because what I'm, what I'm saying is basically supported by the, uh, the Waterfront Preservation Association. Uh, we are the landowners there. We, we want to do something with it. We want to do something positive with it. And uh, we have we have every reason to believe that we can fundraise. We, we, we were working on, the, on projects going back to, we've been in the game for 80 years in Port Dover, and we've, we were instrumental in providing the, the arena, the community center, the, uh, the baseball park. I mean, I could go on with a list for as long as your arm of things that we've done for the community over the years, and we're doing it because we want to do something for the community. Is, is there more that I need to add to that? Okay, we'll go to questions, uh, sir, and uh, Councillor Martins first. Thank you. Uh, through the chair to the deputation, um, is the Lions Club prepared to take on a leadership role with the Port Dover Waterfront um, Association? Yes, we are. And are you prepared to um, work, join a working committee with council? And, yes, and, we are. And can you speak to any type of historic relationship that you have with the Port Dover Waterfront Association? Well, we know them. They're, they're on the same page as we are. We want to do something for the town. We want to do something for Norfolk County. That happens to be there. Uh, and we've seen projects go on in, in the rest of the community, in the rest of the county, that have, have been for the benefit of the, of the community. The River Park in Simcoe here is an example of that. You know, the, the citizens of, Port, of, of Simcoe can go down to the, that waterfront park and see uh, nature. And, and see all the, the fowl and everything that come in there to enjoy those waterways. Why can't we in Port Dover have the same benefit, the same advantage? We want to develop S Silver Lake uh, and Silver Lake Park to do just that for the citizens of our little area. And besides a working group and the obvious repair of the dam, is there anything else that you're asking of council today? We're asking you to fix the dam. <laughs> Period. Thank you. It's been going on for too long. Okay, thank you. Further uh, questions? Mayor Chop? I am, again, you have my support in terms of the yes. repair, provided we can come up with a plan for the repair of Silver Lake. Well, that, that, we, that we can do. That, that, can is, do. that is my biggest concern yes. here, because the dam right, the dam's not going anywhere right now. No. We need to come up with a plan to fix Silver Lake. Yes. And we need to make sure, we know what the government and the bureaucracy and the red tape is like everywhere, and we need to make sure yes. that we can do that, because I want to see the Lions property grow and be developed yes. and do all the things you want to do. Yes. But if we can't, if, I mean, the, the Ministry of Environment, I mean, all kinds of, they have all kinds of rules and regulations, more and more every single year, as you know. Yeah. My only point is, if for some reason we don't get these approvals, then fixing the dam would have been for what? Because now you've got, now you could have had a couple million from the well, county to go put in and, and create potentially, you know, some mini wetlands within that area. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that's the best solution, 
Yeah. All I'm trying to say is, let's do our due diligence to make sure that we can fix Silver Lake. And I think that this was where previous council, it, it never got talked about. All we've been talking about is fixing the dam, but the conversations... Well, it, it goes beyond fixing the dam just because the lake is behind it sure. and we have to do something with the lake. Somewhere along the line, if that dam isn't there, there's no harbor. And there's a history for, for generations of fishermen that have been using that that facility, the harbor. There's also a sailing and power squadron there that have been using the facility. There's thousands of boats worth, my God, I hate to think of what Kenny Hill's boat is worth. In any case, the fact <laughs> of the matter is there are many people using that, the river all the way up, all the way up Black River, all the way up Lean River to the dam. There's all kinds of power boats using. If, if the dam is not fixed somewhere down the road and, and somebody decides to decommission it, we lose the power squadron. We use the sailing squadron. We use that whole history of things that we've done in Port Dover for however long Port Dover's been around. You know, there's, there's more to it than just the lake. Okay, so that's, this is, we're getting somewhere then, because this is then yeah. my question to you, and this I didn't, so you're saying that even if you didn't get the permission to dredge Silver Lake, and so the condition of Silver Lake didn't change, the most important thing then is that the dam stays. And even if you couldn't fix Silver Lake and it remained as it is and progressively got worse, well, then that's get, okay. It wouldn't get worse because we fix it. Whatever, okay. we, whatever pond we're left with, we will work with. Okay. So because, it doesn't, you know. So that, that would be the, even if it was stayed as it is. Yeah. We're that's not, the bigger concern. We're, we're, not expecting, we're not expecting the water level to rise, you know. Uh, I mean, that, that's going to stay wh where it is. But we'll work with what we have. We just can't eliminate the dam. We can't eliminate the dam. There's too much history downriver from the dam and too many people using it as part of our tourist industry. Nor Port Dover is not the, cap sport, the, the, the financial capital of the world. It's a tourist venue. It has been forever and a day. I think God even spent his summers there at some point. <laughs> The, the, it's important for us to keep that, that going. And I don't know how else to impress anybody here about that. We want to see something positive come of this. It's been, it's been a long time coming. We're not blaming this council because you haven't been around long enough to blame. We, we're we're going to blame last councils, though, because we've certainly attempted to Im impress upon them how important this thing is. But we're, we're, somehow or other, we... We haven't been able to do that. I don't know what arm twisting has to be done, but we're certainly willing to work with anybody. We're working, we're going to work with the Waterfront Preservation Association. We're going to work with the, the, you know, the sailing and power squad. And we're going to work with the, with the port because all, it's all part of Port Dover. That's our history. And that lake's been there long enough that it's history for kids. They grew up swimming and fishing and boating and canoeing on that lake. No, we're not going to have that back. But we still, there's history. We're trying not to kick all that out the back door because somebody says, we don't care about you people. You're too small for us. You're in our way. Oh, I, I think yeah. that everybody hears and quite, and like, like, like I said, I think that even we would pass the tender today to, to put it back at that point yeah. if that motion came forward. However, I, I think that's the easy decision. I think the responsible well. decision is just to make sure that we can go and fix Silver Lake. However, what I hadn't heard before yourself was the statement that you want the dam regardless of whether S Silver Lake improves or stays the same. And that statement I haven't heard well, before today. We, we as Lions, property owners there, want to improve it. We're going to improve it to whatever level we're allowed to improve it. Obviously, we're not going to be shot over it. But we want to improve the portion that is our property. When we bought into that property, there was water. And it was a big selling point for us to, to spend money and to develop it into the, the recreational asset that it is. We want to keep that alive. But it's not just our, the lake and our property. What's happening down river is also important to us because we're not just lions for the Silver Lake, we're lions for Port Dover. And that whole area, and it's not just Port Dover, it's Norfolk County. And I'm not sure if you 
are aware, I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the number of tourists who come into the area every year and the more and more people that are coming in there to settle and buy, pro and buy property and retire there. And I mean, the infrastructure is starting to climb and climb and climb. You know, somewhere along the line, we're supporting all that new, all that new stuff that's coming up. We have new people coming. They want to have a place to have a lake to, to go to, a place to go watch the swans. We have swans. Who would have thought that they'd come to Port Dover? It must be a good spot, right? Anyway, th there's things happening there that are important. It's not just, yes, but spend $2 million. $2 million is nothing when you look at what it, look at the context of tourism brings into the area and boating comes in, brings into the area and the fishing port brings into the area. Okay, uh, to, if I, I just... Go to Mr. Taylor, Councillor Taylor. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to our deputation. <clears throat> how much are you guys prepared to fundraise? Like, what figure would your cap be? How... Does the word millions say anything to you? Most certainly. But then, uh, my, then my millions. My question comes from... Uh, wouldn't it make sense to get, be able to get an accurate 2019 number on how much fundraising would be required to get that dredging project done? To then have that cap put in place, like this is the target. You're, you're putting the cart in front of the horse. The reality of it is, is that if we are going to be left with a creek, then the, then the, the estimate is immaterial. You know what I'm saying? We need to know that we have a lake. Once we know we have a lake, that we're going to have some kind of lake. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but some kind of lake. Then we can pl make plans to see what we're going to dredge, how much we're going to dredge. I mean, maybe it's only a third of it that we're going to dredge. Maybe it's only the channel of the river coming into the lake. Maybe there'll be a pond somewhere in there and a part of the lake. I mean, we don't know what we're going to have yet. We don't know how, many, how much money we're going to be able to, to come up with until we sell that plan to somebody. We have to develop it. But they're not going to come and say, well, we're interested in giving you some money to fix that if the dam isn't all fixed. I mean, the, the dam has to be first. Duh. I'm sorry, but I, I don't know how to explain it any more than that. The dam has to be fixed first before we can then move on to what we're going to do next. Uh, yes? Do you, un do you understand? Okay, Councillor Taylor. Moving on to Councillor Huffman. Uh, thank you, Chairman Columbus. Through you to the deputation. I think you just answered my question in that um, speech yes. part. So, to be clear, what you would like to go away with today is a... Um, a commitment. <laughs> yeah, a commitment that the dam is repaired, correct? Yes. Step one, okay. And then, if the dam is repaired, that leaves everything else that you've spoken about, with the exception specifically of Silver Lake, where the market and the building yes, and yes. the soccer field yes. used to be and stuff. I don't know. We'll maybe still be. Still, yeah. We'll still be. Um, everything else would be staying in place the way it is today. No, no effects on that. But ultimately, Silver Lake has suffered the most damage, correct? Okay. Yes. So, the, I guess my question is, so you know that the water level isn't going to return to where it was, but the, anticip the hope is that if you're able to dredge it, that what? The level, what? No, no, the level, the level will stay. We'll just have channels that bring fresh water in okay. to the lower area of the, of the, of the okay. what the lake is. And possibly somewhere along the line, it, we can put docks back in again like we had at one time. We're not going to have dragon boat races, obviously. It's too shallow. But That's okay. Kids we have can, them in water for but, now. But still, kids can come and fish with their, their parents. They go down to the, their, the perch derby. And they fish on the pier. I mean, they'll go fishing at the lake like they used to, providing there's a lake. Okay. Through you, uh, Chair, one more, one more question, I guess. So what is, um, so as a counselor from, I know it's an all Norfolk approach, yeah. and I know this yes. is a big issue for, and it's been on the docket for um, eight, over eight years now. Yes. What is the response back to the rest of the citizens from Norfolk County when we're looking at spending this much money? in Port Dover? Well, I'm sure that there's been some complaints about any citizens from any other port 
whenever we have we hear th things being set, spent on in, in other parts of, the, of uh, Norfolk County, the citizens of Port Dover probably cringe too. I mean, no matter how you play this game, somebody is not going to be happy because how come, what about us? Okay. Well, we've been saying what about us for so long now that we think like we're the... In regards red, to the dam. Red-headed yeah. stepchild, yes. And so somewhere along the line, is anything ever going to be done? Because this is a, not something that's just happened last week. It's been going on for quite a long time. And, and we have a heritage idea. We have something that we have going, and it's been going on for many, many years. We, we just want to keep going down the road with the two. And shouldn't we as a... Well, we, we are the bedroom community of, of Simcoe, I guess. We're not really important that much anymore. We're, just, we're just kind of being sub, brought in to the Simcoe sphere. But we have things that we want to do too. Why can't, why do we have to keep waiting on the back bench when everybody else gets their projects done? Okay, and, and thank you for answering that. I noticed that there were probably some groans there, but I think it's due diligence from my aspect of being a counselor from yes. representing Ward 7, that you do have constituents calling with these concerns. Yeah. So I think it's fair enough that I get to yeah. answer them and you get to answer them. Yes. <laughs> Ask them an answer. Thanks. All right. Further questions to Mr. Belanger? Yes, uh, Mayor Chop. <clears throat> so I didn't leave anybody out. If we were to look at potentially creating a committee here to look at the approvals um, and to make yes. sure that we have this all in order, because two million isn't the issue. It's when this project soars to 10 million that yeah. there is a concern. Um, we have money that is set aside for the repair in the capital budget, so that's not the issue here. It's making sure that we do our due diligence so that the costs yeah. don't soar beyond this. Yeah. If we created the committee, uh, and there was no, when I had asked the um, Silver Lake Association to uh, come to speak today, and I didn't yeah. mention the Lions, the only reason that that happened was because they had come to my office yes. and pitched this idea of fundraising. It was for no other reason yes. other than that. Yes. So I appreciate you coming today. If we created a committee with counselors, with members of the Lions Association, with members of uh, Silver Lake, would there be anybody else that we would be missing here that you think that should sit on the committee as we look to get the approvals well, in a i mean obvi obviously the council for number one uh, i'm going to say port dover lions number two yeah i know the, the waterfront preservation uh, association would be number three right. i'm sure that the, the the sailing and power squadron would probably have something to say and i wouldn't be surprised that if somebody some of the fishermen uh, would have a delegation of some kind because there there are some 90 odd spin-off jobs in the port there that have come off of the fishing industry and those people have been paying their taxes and making their living for a long time so they shouldn't be forgotten either I mean the reality of it is that after a while it gets top heavy but by rights you know everybody's had an, uh, you know, the, a bait on the hook for a long time and nobody's biting, you know? We need to do, we need to do something. And it, it, it's, it's desperation time because a year ago, they were ready to issue a, rep a tender. We had, we had a, a bid and we were going to issue it and then somebody all of a sudden got shot. I don't know what happened, but they changed their minds. Two people died or whatever it was. All of a sudden, it's all off the table. All those years and years of working and speaking and getting together and meeting it's all it died now here we are starting again what where are we going i thought i thought we had a a, a a standard to hey let's help these guys let's get something going for port dover and here we are on bended knee again trying to re resuscitate this thing so in none of the conversations, with all due respect, have we sat here and talked about decommissioning the dam right now. All we're saying is, let's do our due diligence yeah. as this yeah. new council. Yes. Give us a little bit of time. We've only been in yes. for two months. Yes, yes. Let us make sure that we can get the permissions yes. to go and do the work. Thank you. So there's no talk right now of yeah. us saying we're decommissioning it and so on. But right. if we can't get the permissions, then I think it's a fair conversation to have. Yes because how does that impact the future, so. Yes, but I would like you to tell the radio station not to keep saying that there's talk about decommissioning, because they're not on the same page, and a lot of people are listening to the radio station, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> thank you. Anyways, thank Any you for further questions for the gentleman? No, I guess that's fine, thank well, you. Well, thank you for your attention, and we hope, we hope. Appreciate you coming forward.
I would, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. We do have one more. Oh, I'm sorry, we have another one. My yeah. apologies. Okay. And the deputation is from Mr. Tim Rogers, I believe. Is he here? Okay. Sir, you're here to speak about Meisner Dam? Y yes, I, I am. You have uh, 10 minutes, sir? I need about three and a half minutes, sir. Okay. Go for it. Recreational boating has a long history in Port Dover. My name is Tim Roger. I am a boater, but I'm here today on behalf of the Port Dover Yacht Club to show our support for the Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association's initiative. Port, the Port Dover Yacht Club was founded in 1946. We have about 400 members, most of which don't come from Port Dover. We have members that come from Woodstock and from Brantford and from Georgetown. But it doesn't matter where we come from, a couple of things we all have in common is we like to spend a lot of time and a lot of money in Port Dover. The Yacht Club owns 1,700 feet of waterfront property. We can accommodate 67 boats. We also host about 400 uh, transient boaters every year. Those are boaters that come from outside of Port Dover, most of them from the United States to visit our town. And they collectively spend tens of thousands of dollars in Port Dover every year. The Yacht Club employs two bartenders, a housekeeper and a groundskeeper. We're a nonprofit organization. We have revenues of about $200,000 a year, most of which goes back to the community in the forms of wages and, and, and operating expenses. The waterways below Meisner Dam are also home to about 300 other boats that are docked at marinas and at private residences, and they include a number of sailboats that have uh, uh, deep draft clearance issues. They, you've got keels on bottoms of sailboats that have keels on them. Many of them are like eight feet long, so they need lots of water to be able to get through. And the Port Dover Yacht Club believes that if the issues concerning Meisner Dam are not addressed, that a major silt problem is forthcoming that will impede the use of the river for recreational boating. And this type of catastrophe has happened in the past in Port Burwell. It's happened in Port Stanley. There are a few things we could look at if, as the silt is heading towards the river right now. If the silt ends up in the river, we can dredge. And I can't tell you, and I don't think anybody can tell you, uh, how often we need to dredge. Is it once a year or three times a year or once in every three years? I don't know that. But I can tell you for sure that dredging is very expensive and it's also something that needs to be done in perpetuity. We're always going to have to dredge. So it's something that we're always going to need to have money for. We know the snow's coming every year. We have money in the budget for snow removal. We know the silt's going to come. There's going to need to, need to be money forever for silt removal. Or we don't worry about dredging. We let it start to silt in. We have... Uh, about 400 boats in the river that are going to be displaced. We could spend money to double the size of the existing marina. 20 million, 30 million, 40 million dollars to double the marina because that's what it's going to take to accommodate all those boats that will be displaced. The other marinas in, the, in Norfolk County are full. There's really nowhere else for people to go. We have a situation right now in Port Dover uh, with Bridge Yachts that's had to give up a bunch of their dockage, and we've got people that can't find places to put their boats in the wintertime, and they're going to have problems. They're not, go not all of them will be able to find dockage in Port Dover. So we're already at capacity. So the other thing we could do is to not double the size of the marine and spend 40 or $50 million on that. We could not dredge. We could just let nature take its course and allow the river to silt in and displace roughly 400 boats and the thousands of people those, that, that use those boats, the families that use them, and all the money that they spend to other areas. We can lose some to Elgin, can lose some to Haldeman, Niagara, down to Halton and Wentworth. You're going to lose all those people, all the money they spend. You're also going to lose the roughly 400 guests we get, the transient boaters that come from, from uh, mostly from the United States every year that spend all that money in Port Dover. Or we could address the silt issue before it becomes an issue. Well, it's up in Silver Lake, and then we don't have to worry about it damaging the waterways below, making it not navigable. And that's why the Port Dover Yacht Club is here to support the Waterfront Asso Preservation Association's initiative. We'll also support it uh, in kind through con contributions in kind, whether it's man manpower and labor and equipment and boats and those types of things. So we're, we're here committed to it, and I want to let everybody on council know that and also ask that, that everybody on council support it as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, starting with uh, Councilor Martin for questions. 
Thank you, Councillor Columbus. Through, uh, through you to the deputation, would the Yacht Club be interested in joining a committee, a working group, should that happen? I, I am confident that we have members at the Yacht Club that would love to do that. Thank you. Okay. Further questions to Mr. Roger? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Chop. Uh, to you, Mr. Chairman, I would like to um, make a motion to waive the procedural rules of order. Um, Mike Scruton is here today. Uh, as everybody knows, or most people know, I live on the, the water myself. Mike is uh, a neighbor down the river um, who has his business uh, on the water, who does dredging activities all over. His family has a long history in Port Dover. Um, and uh, I asked him if he would be able to come today, um, not to make a deputation, but just if anybody here at council had any questions uh, to ask and from his perspective on the river. So we've got a thought that to waive the rules of order. We need to move in a seconder for that. Move in a seconder, Councilor Michelli, seconder, Councilor Van Passen, that we, uh, the rules of order, those in favor? That's carried, thank you. So. Does uh, the gentleman wish to come to the podium for, for questions? Okay. <laughs> okay, you're here. The mayor had mentioned that you're here for, for questions, if anybody has a question. Uh, yes. Councillors, mayor, go ahead. Councillor Van Pass. And just for a little starters, could you give us a little bit of background on how long your family has dealt with that river, that piece of that river there, and maybe that would put it in better context about why you're such an expert on the situation. Um, I don't know when my Grandpa George Gamble came to, to Port Dover, but um, I would guess in the early 1900s. Um, okay. I, we've been in the marine construction business, and I've been running boats on that river for, well, in 48, probably 40 years. Um, I see every spring the water levels changing, the depths changing in that river um, because I'm in the dredging business. I move silt in Port Burwell primarily. Um, it is a problem there, but they don't have a harbor. It's a natural harbor like ours. Ours has been there since the French, you know, who, whoever it was up by Tim's mom's place, there's a plaque. The sailboats came in there and wintered in 1800s, I'm guessing. Pardon? 350 years ago, big sailboats came up by your mother's place, correct? I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just guessing. They, to navigate Lake Erie in its fury, they were fairly large vessels. I don't believe Silver or Meisner's Dam was there at the time. It's just me thinking that uh, if those boats were able to get up there at that time and Dover was chosen as a, a natural harbor at the time, that I don't believe we're going to have the silting issues that others have mentioned, in my opinion. Uh, what it happens from Meisner's Dam to Coleman's Point, I don't have any, I really don't know. In that area, it could silt. Hey, I'm looking for more questions to Mr. Scrooge. Mayor Chop, I see a question in the button there. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just wondering if you've kind of seen the plans for the tender and so on. If there are, you know, people have talked about having somewhere to be able to fish or potentially put a fish lab. Do you see any other potential solutions that council has not looked at? Um, I visited the site with... with Paul Creighton the other day and came up with a few solutions that would improve the structure of the dam by placing sheet piling a distance from on the Silver Lake side to either towards or right adjacent to the existing traffic bridge like the current BU's current traffic bridge not the old bridge parallel with that almost right up against it and filling that area with concrete, shot rock, that type of thing. And going over towards the slough way and creating a 90 degree towards the, uh, what would you call it, the abutment, 
that the cement portion of the pedestrian bridge ends at kind of thing coming over in there and creating we'll say a several hundred ton mass in front of the dam to protect it and give it structural integrity uh, that way. So, so we're clear for everybody here, you're not suggesting removing the dam either with that potential no. solution. Okay. So um, we're just looking at ways, I mean, we have a significant estimate. There are potentially other potential other options to be able to reduce some pressure on the dam so that we aren't looking at a repair that's in the millions, potentially. 